Hey you guys, it's Jaren. I know it's been a while, um, but I had a word that the Lord gave me. Um, <laughs> he actually gave this to me um, a while ago and I've been trying to uh, get on here and record it, but things just kept getting in the way. Um, so I am here now and um, I want to talk to you guys about, um, you know, what the Lord is doing like in this season. Um, last week, um, on Rosh Hashanah, um, after uh, the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, um, I heard the Lord say, the tables are turning. And he reminded me of a word that he actually uh, began to give me, um, actually like within the first few days of 2020. And um, he reminded me of it like maybe six months ago or so. and. Um, you know, I, but I, I knew that it wasn't like time to post or any, post it or anything. Um, but the Lord reminded me of it last week, and so I wanted to get on here. And you know, um, <laughs> basically, the Lord is saying the tables are turning, and He used um, the story from First Kings chapter one to illustrate that to me. Um, now I'm not going to read um, all of First Kings chapter one; it's really long. But I'm just going to um, summarize. Um, and sorry for the trash can in the back. I know it's like super weird and awkward and distracting, probably more so distracting that I pointed it out. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to summarize. Um, so basically, David at this point is really old. He um, <clears throat> is about 70, um, which is, you know, how old he was when he died. Um, you know, he's he's in that age range. He's really old and he can't um, keep himself warm. So he has to... Um, he has to have like a, a young um, girl, um, you know, sleep with him or, you know, sleep in, the, not sleep with him, you know, in that sense, but sleep with him, um, you know, in the same bed um, so that he can keep warm. But um, <laughs> as David is laying in his deathbed, Adonijah, um, which is uh, the fourth son, um, he decides that he's going to make himself king. Um, and you know, you could you could be alarmed that he would do such a thing, especially while David is still alive. Um, you could be alarmed. But, you know, the Bible says um, it says that uh, David had never disciplined him at any time. You know, not even asking him, Adonijah, why are you doing that? So, you know, this was you know, this was no different. Like if Adonijah, you know, he, he, he thinks to himself, oh, I'm going to make myself king. Um, he thinks it's okay to do that. But, you know, that doesn't excuse Adonijah because, you know, he still has a conscience and he still knows that what he was doing was wrong. He just did it because he knew he could get away with it um, because David never, uh, you know, disciplined him. You know, Adonijah still lived, um, you know, in, in a time where um, there were kingdoms and monarchies all around. Um, so for him to do something like that, you know, he, he knows how kingdom succession works. Um, so uh, he, he knew, basically what I'm saying is he knew what he was doing. Um, so he, um, Adonijah got Joab um, and Abiathar on his side. So Abiathar was uh, the priest that was serving David at the time. And um, Joab was like David's military commander. Um, and, um, you know, they, they basically betrayed David and went with Adonijah. Adonijah gets like a bunch of chariots and charioteers and he recruits like 50 men to run ahead of him. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's doing all this stuff. He, um, has like this giant feast and he sacrifices all, um, you know, these animals, like he's like making this huge show of godliness, but you know, he's, you know, the love of God is like far from his heart. Um, and you know, he's, you know, he's throwing this huge party and it, it, it says he didn't invite, um, you know, the opposing party, including Bathsheba and Solomon, um, you know, which which speaks to, you know, he knew what what the right thing to, to do was. He, he knew that um, Solomon was supposed to be king, um, you know, and, and we see that because, you know, he didn't invite him. So he's like, you know, whatever, forget you guys. So Nathan, the prophet, he's like, OK, this is ridiculous. So he goes to Bathsheba. 
And he tells her, like, what's going on? He's like, you know, haven't you heard that Adonijah has made himself king? Why, why haven't you gone to David and um, done anything about this? You know, um, and, and he and Bathsheba, um, you know, go into a plan of action about confronting David with this issue. Um, and, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, why wouldn't Bathsheba go to David, um, you know, about something like this? <clears throat> and, you know, I'm seeing that, you know, we get this detail that David had never disciplined Adonijah at any time, not even asking him why he did anything. So I'm sure that in Bathsheba's mind, she's like, OK, if David never uh, disciplined Adonijah for anything, why would he do anything about this situation? After all, um, Amnon raped his sister Tamar and David did nothing. Um, Absalom killed uh, Amnon for raping his sister Tamar. David did nothing about it. Absalom um, uh, led a rebellion and David didn't even stand and fight. He didn't even stand and defend himself. Um, you know, why would this situation be any different? You know, um, but Nathan, the prophet convinces Bathsheba to go to David. Um, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to come in after you and I'm going to back you up. Um, so, you know, that's what Bathsheba does. She goes to David and, um, she tells him like, you know, Hey, you, you made this promise to me. Um, you know, that that Solomon would be king. And, you know, we don't see that promise made like in, you know, scripture. You know, we don't see that David making that promise to Bathsheba. But, you know, we, we know that, you know, Solomon was, you know, the, the rightful king. Um, but Bathsheba confronts David and she tells him this. And she's like, you know, if you don't do something after you die, um, you know, if Adonijah succeeds in his, uh, you know, his, uh, campaign to, to become king, you know, will be treated as criminals after you die. Adonijah is going to kill us because we're threats. You know, Solomon is a viable threat to, you know, Adonijah's throne. Um, so, uh, and, and De uh, Nathan comes in after Bathsheba, you know, basically says the same thing. And um, David's like, you know what, call Bathsheba back in here. And he reaffirms his promise to Bathsheba that Solomon is going to be king um, of Israel after David. He's like, you know what, this very day, you know, you're about to, you know, Solomon is going to be king. And so he makes all these plans. He's like, you know, have Solomon ride on my own mule, which is a big deal at the time because mules, um, you know, were uh, like forbid, like uh, cross beating crossbreeding was um, um, prohibited in like the Jewish faith. And um, so for, for David to have a mule, like he had to have that imported or, or something like that. So um, for anybody to have a mule, like you had probably had to have money and to ride on the king's mule, um, you know, was a big deal. Like that's like, that's like riding on Air Force One or something like, you know, like on a presidential procession, you know? Um, so, you know, on you know if you were to ride on this mule unauthorized like you know that's that's death automatically like you just sealed your own fate so for people to see solomon riding this mule like they're like oh my gosh like did you see solomon riding on david's mule like what's going on here you know and they take solomon down to gihon spring and um solomon is anointed king they blow the ram's horn there's a huge celebration and then um, the, the scene flashes to Adonijah's banquet and his friends, Jonathan, son of Abiathar, the priest, he runs in, he's like, <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> Adonijah's like, oh, you know, come in, come in, you know, you, you must have good news. Um, you always have good news. You're a good man. And uh, Jonathan's like, man, this time I ain't got it. Um, Solomon has just been made king over, you know, all of Israel. And so like, that's like the first blow, like they're like, what? <laughs> and I'm, I'm just going to like read, you know, um, what happened. Our Lord King David has just declared Solomon king. That's the first bomb. The king sent him down to Gihon Spring with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah son of Jehoiada, protected by the king's bodyguard. That's another blow. They had him ride on the king's own mule. Another blow. <laughs> and Zadok and Nathan have anointed him at Gihon Spring as the new king. Another blow. They've just returned and the whole city is celebrating and rejoicing. That's what all the noise is about. Okay, so now, like, you know, Jonathan is about to deliver the final blow. 
Um, you know, what's more, Solomon is now sitting on the royal throne as king and all the royal officials have gone to King David and congratulated him saying, may your God make Solomon Solomon's fame even greater than your own and may Solomon's reign be even greater than yours. Then the king bowed his head in worship as he lay in bed and he said, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who today has chosen a successor to sit on my throne while I'm still alive to see it. So at this point, it's like Jonathan dropped the atomic bomb in that banquet and everybody everybody just scatters like it like they're just quick to get out of there because now, you know, their their banquet of, of you know, celebration has suddenly turned into um, a dangerous ordeal. You know, they're in rebellion now. They're in open rebellion. And if they're seen supporting Adonijah, um, they're about to get it. So um, they all scatter and they, you know, they leave Adonijah <laughs> like, see, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And Adonijah, he's like, oh my gosh, like, I got to do something. I got to get out of here. So he runs to... Um, you know, and, and seek sanctuary. So he had seized the horns um, he, uh, of the altar in the sacred tent. And, um, you know, he, he, you know, he's begging for mercy, basically. And Solomon, he's like, okay, if he doesn't prove to be um, another problem, if he doesn't cause any more trouble, then I'll let him live, you know. Um, so that was a remarkable show of mercy um, on, uh, on Solomon's part. And uh, what the Lord uh, gave me with... Uh, this story um, is he said that Adonijah represents the people in your life who've gotten comfortable with doing evil because they haven't been punished. Um, you know, God has been convicting them of, uh, you know, either by conscience or through other people. But since they've suffered no consequences from anyone with the authority to afflict them, they refuse to repent. Um, but God says that their time is up, um, but they don't have eyes to see it. Um, because their heart is so hardened, um, they've they've entered so far into their own self-deception by um, believing in their heart that they haven't sinned, um, that, you know, they, they just can't see. You know, and, and God said that, in fact, God will use the trouble that they're making in your life to expose the other ones who do not support you and also to accelerate and elevate you. So, you know, you pay attention to the text here. Um, David would have never known and, you know, the whole kingdom would have never known um, who was, you know, secretly against David um, and against Solomon and, you know, against just the new way of doing things if uh, Adonijah had not, um, you know, led this rebellion. So, you know, it brought Joab out into the light. It brought Abiathar, the priest, out into the light. Um, you know, everybody else who supported Adonijah. Um, and also God used the trouble that Adonijah caused to accelerate and elevate Solomon, you know, quicker than, um, you know, he normally um, would have. Because, you know, if this hadn't happened, David would have probably not have done anything. Um, David would have died and there would have been utter chaos after um, he died. And Solomon and Bathsheba would have for sure have been killed. You know, that doesn't mean that, that God, you know, couldn't have stepped in, but, um, you know, you know, he, he, he definitely would have been treated as a criminal and killed. Um, so, you know, um, Adonijah treated Solomon as if he were unimportant and, you know, useless, um, you know, by not inviting him to the, the banquet, um, you know, casting him aside the way he did. Um, but God flipped the tables and the two sons of David were revealed to be, um, you know, who they, they, they truly were. Um, so, Adonijah paraded himself, you know, as king of Israel, um, but really he was an imposter. And, and Solomon was treated as insignificant and unimportant, but really um, he was the true king of Israel. So God is saying in this season, what is on the inside of people's hearts will be shown for everybody to see. God will flip it suddenly and um, everybody will see, um, you know, who you truly are, whether you really serve God or whether you don't, um, whether your, your heart is pure or whether it's not. Um, and, um, you know, God also told me, um, last, the last Jewish month, um, the month of Elul, um, the Lord said that the king is in the field and, um, you know, the, the seeds that you've been harvesting, I mean, the seeds that you've been planting, whether good or bad are about to harvest. And, um, you know, with the, with uh, us coming into Rosh Hashanah, um, God uh, showed me that um, 
we entered into the month of Tishri, which um, symbolizes judgment. And God is God is saying that He is bringing judgment, and we see that um, with um, you know Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Ginsburg's death um, and the appointment of um, Amy Coney Barrett um, as the the new uh, Supreme Court Justice, um, which is really important. But that's that's a word for another day. Um, but there is there there is something that that. Um, you know, God, uh, or that, that was, that David said in the Bible here, um, that really stuck out to me. Um, he swore to, um, to Bathsheba and Solomon. Okay. Yeah. So he, he swore to Bathsheba, um, um, the, the vow that he said, as surely as the Lord lives, who has rescued me from every danger, your son Solomon will be the next king and will sit on my throne this very day. Um, so, you know, he saw fit to mention, you know, that, that God had delivered him from every danger. And if there's anybody who can attest to the fact that God delivers and God protects, it's David. You know, he was running for a lot of his life. He was always in, in some sort of fight, you know. Um, you know, he was a man of war and he was always delivered from, um, you know, the danger surrounding him. And um, let's see. And um, God also wanted you to, or wanted me to tell you guys, um, the way that Bathsheba um, came to David and told him what was going on. Um, God wants you to do that with him in the same way. He wants, he wants you to cast your cares. Sorry, there's like a moth that flew. Um, he wants you to cast your cares on him. Um, he wants you to be persistent. He wants you to um, remind him of the promise that you made to him. Um, you know, the, the persistence was, you know, Bathsheba came and then Nathan came and, you know, um, they reaffirmed everything that Bathsheba said. You know, David was in constant reminder of, um, you know, what he promised to Bathsheba and Solomon. Um, so, you know, be persistent and, and know that they, God is, is faithful to complete the work um, that he began um, you know, in your life when he gave you this promise, um, you know, and, and Solomon, God reminded me that, that when Solomon was born, um, God had him named, um, Jedidiah, which means beloved of the Lord, you know, and if you know anything about how Solomon was born, um, he was, he was a product of a relationship that was born out of, um, adultery and murder. And so for God to, um, you know, say, that of Solomon, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, who your parents were, what they did. Um, you know, if you belong to Christ, if you were, um, the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. You know, the old has passed away and, and, the, and the new life has begun. Um, so, you know, you have a, you, you have a clean slate with God, you know, when you repent. And, um, you know, the Lord was just showing me, you know, with, with Solomon and how he, he raised up Solomon in, in this time. Um, you know, we are God, we, the, the Bible says that we're God's special possession um, and um, God has set us apart. Um, so if anybody messes with us, you know, um, the, the way the devil tries to antagonize us and stuff, um, God takes it personally. And you know, um, when when the devil comes against us, he's really coming against God. So these people in your life, who are unrepentant and they're treating you any way they want to, um, you know, they're they're treating you, um, you know, without the fear of God in mind. Um, you know, God says that He's taking that personally. And guys, you know, I can attest to this. This the, the, this has happened to me before. You know, I. If, if you're new to this channel, um, you know, in a few pre previous videos, I've talked about um, a lady who I, I worked with um, at a previous job who, um, you know, the whole time I had been working there for like six months already. And the whole time that I was working there, she was always like antagonizing me, antagonizing me, always trying to set traps for me, always trying to get me in trouble, um, just just like laying on very heavy psychological warfare and um you know it all kind of came to a head um you know um the in the six months that i was working there um when she literally threatened me you know she was in my face screaming you guys like like in my face screaming and um you know i didn't move i didn't you know um 
I, I wasn't gonna fight her, like I wasn't gonna do any of that. And this woman is like old enough to be my grandma, you know, <laughs> when she's like in my face, you know, doing all this stuff. Um, but, but in that moment, um, I remember like it wasn't windy outside or anything, but I felt a small breeze like across my face. And immediately I knew um, that, that the spirit of the Lord was standing in between me and her. Um, so even though she was very close to me, she was screaming in my face and you know, um, there was the threat there. Um, it was like I was between her, like it was like there was a glass wall in between me and her because I knew that the Lord had told me that she wasn't fighting against me now. She was fighting against him and she will reap what she showed. She will reap what she sowed and she did reap what she sowed. You know, she ended up getting fired, um, you know, not immediately after that happened, but she ended up getting fired and she had been working there for like three years and she had been doing these things to other people. She had been harassing other people, bullying other people. Um, but, but when, when, when I came in there, um, and not because of anything, you know, I, not because of who I am or anything I did, but because God calls me his special possession. Um, when people, when people act like that toward me, God is going to deal with them, you know, and he did, he, he did deal with her. And, um, you know, this, this story, uh, of, in, in first Kings, um, you know, it, it shows a, a greater overarching story of, uh, or a greater overarching lesson of the love and mercy of God. You know, Adonijah deserved to die for what he did, um, but Solomon had mercy on him, and you know, God had mercy on, on Adonijah. And you know, the mercy and grace that uh, um, God had for Solomon, even though um, he was a product of, of all this um, scandal and things like that, he still saw fit to include Solomon in the Messianic line. Um, you know, Solomon being uh, uh, an ancestor of, of Jesus. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the Bible in, entirely is an in, incredible redemptive story. Um, but, you know, this, this story is what I'm trying to say is this story is overarching, um, you know, uh, showing God's love and mercy that even if you repent, um, or when you repent, God will still forgive you and um, God will sh still show his um, unfailing love and mercy to you. Um, sorry, I don't know why it took me so long to get that out, but um, I want to pray for you guys. Um, oh, and, and I, I asked the Lord, um, because when I was reading this and I, I kept reading it over and over and I asked the Lord, like, you know, what exactly, um, you know, is, is this word for, you know, because I was thinking, um, I kept thinking, you know, restoration, reconciliation, um, you know, elevation, all that stuff. But God, um, he, you know, I, I'm repeating again what um, I told you guys, in, you know, earlier. Um, God wants you to, anything that he has promised you, God wants you to go to him and, and um, remind him about it. And, you know, be persistent. I'm so serious, guys. So if you're believing for marriage restoration, if you're believing for reconciliation, if you're believing for justice, if you're believing for, um, you know, uh, recognition, ele um, elevation, if you're believing for the double portion of honor that God promised you, if you're believing for God to deliver you, um, he will, if he, he will, if, if he's promised you that. And, you know, based on God's own character, that he is a defender and he's a deliverer of um, those that he loves, um, he will deliver you out of your situation. Um, so I'm going to pray for you guys really quickly. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everybody watching this video, everybody under the sound of my voice, God. I pray that you just give them peace and comfort um, as they face the things um, that they are going through on a daily basis, God. I pray that you give them your mind about the situation. I pray that you give them eyes to see, God. And I pray that you deal with them according to your character, that you are a defender and you are a protector, God. And those who are reading, who are watching this, who represent um, who represent um, Adonijah and what he did, God. I pray that there is a conviction in their hearts and I pray that they repent and I pray that they um, they receive your, your unfailing love and mercy, God. And I pray that they can walk in the opposite direction and do what you would have them do, God. And I pray for everybody um, who is believing for the promises that you've given them, God. I pray that you bring them to pass, God. I pray that you surprise them. I pray that you turn the tables, God, suddenly, exponentially, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
So guys, just be encouraged and be blessed. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't been on here um, in a while. Um, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, like, you know, the attacks have been very intense um, and the warfare has been, uh, you know, very intense. You know, um, last week, I would say was the most difficult week that I've probably had this year. And, um, you know, but even as I was, um, you know, as I was kind of lamenting, you know, to to God about, you know, what the, the events that transpired last week um, in my own personal life, um, I was saying, you know what, like this week has been horrid, but next week could be the best week of my life. It could be the greatest week of my life. All I have to do is just get through this week. Um, you know, and even if the next week isn't like the greatest, most just popping week of my life, I will never have to relive the events um, that transpired in this week in the way that they've transpired. Like I'll never have to relive them in the order um, that, that I've gotten them ever again. So that at least was a comfort. And you guys, like this week has been amazing so far. You know, um, it, it's, you know, I, I've gotten so much rest and I've gotten just so much um, you know, I, I, I've sort of gotten a break, you know, um, and, and so many good things have happened to me this week. So many good unexpected things that, you know, may seem small, but, um, you know, they're a pretty big deal to me and the week isn't even over. It's Friday, you know, there's still, you know, the rest of today and tomorrow. Um, so, um, and then I think yesterday or two days ago, I saw this really cool, um, graphic that said, you know, Basically, somebody's getting hired for the first time today. Somebody's t hearing I love you for the first time. You know, if you're going through anything, um, you know, tomorrow could be the best day of your life. So keep going, you know, and that just kind of reaffirmed, like, you know, um, what I said, said in my heart last week, um, you know, about, you know, this possibly being the greatest week of my life. So, um, you know, I just want to um, share that with you guys and, um, you know, just, just keep going, keep going, keep living. God is going to help you. So, um, Thank you for everybody for your prayers. Um, you know, um, thank you for the unexpected blessings that um, you know you send me. Um, it really means a lot. Um, you guys have helped me out so much more than you know. Um, so everybody, be blessed. I hope you have a great day and a great weekend and a great um, next week. All right, bye guys.